It's a pleasure to call Stuart Anderson to make his maiden speech. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I want to first by start by honouring my predecessor, Eleanor Smith, from the opposite bench. She did a great work in championing the NHS in Wolverhampton and representing the people there. And she was the first black woman elected to Parliament from the West Midlands. Mm. So I wish her every success in her future endeavours. I am delighted to be stood here as the Member of Parliament for Wolverhampton South West. It is an honour that I I don't take lightly and I am determined to ensure that I fulfil this opportunity with everything I have. I will be devoted in serving the people that represented me and voted for me and for the people that didn't. I will serve you the same way as well. (laughs) The story of Wolverhampton starts in 985 AD, when Lady Wolfruna founded it. It grew from strength to strength right the way up to the 19th century, and it was known as a global leader in the manufacturing of locks and all kinds of iron goods. There is so much about this great history we could discuss today, we would miss the gems that are happening today. In my constituency, we are home to the great Wolverhampton Wanderers, the Wolves as they are known. And I am looking forward to enjoying watching them beat my other members' teams as they continue (laughs) in their great success. We have an excellent university that brings people from all over to the heart of our city. And we've got an outstanding local newspaper in the Express and Star, Mm. the largest privately owned newspaper in the country, where the Prime Minister even undertook work experience. (laughs) (laughs) But the real prize in Wolverhampton is the people. They are some of the most genuine and straight-talking people you will meet. Uh, I've experienced both of these qualities on the campaign trail, (laughs) sometimes wishing it wasn't as straight-talking. But I always knew where I stood. We have a multicultural, multi-faith population, ranging from Christian, Sikh, Muslim, Hindu, and many more. And in Wolverhampton, you can walk down one street and pass a church, a gurdwara, and a mosque. And you will see those communities living together, working together, hand in hand. And this is testimony to the great people of Wolverhampton. The motto of Wolverhampton is out of darkness cometh light. And that's very apt where I go on to this next bit of how I came to be here against all odds. My childhood started very normally with my mum being a nurse and like most people in my class in Hereford, my dad was in the SAS. While I was only eight years old, his life was tragically cut short. My mum had to bring up three boys on her own and I, she brought us in, up in a loving and caring house, and I want to honour her for this. Yeah. Yeah. But life as a single parent was not easy, and she had to go without food to make sure us boys could eat, but she did it in a good way. I went to probably the worst school in the area, and I learnt far more about life than I ever did about education. <laughs> so at 16, on leaving school with no qualifications, I signed up to be a soldier. I joined the finest regiment in the British Army, the Royal Green Jackets, (laughs) and I became a rifleman. I was still only 17 years old when I was shot in a training accident, tragically, by a friend with a faulty weapon. When they finally got me to hospital, they told me I had suffered a high-velocity gunshot wound, I would lose my foot, and my leg would be amputated up to the knee if the bullet had travelled. So I did what every hardened soldier does, and I cried and asked for my mum. (laughs) They managed to save my foot through four major operations and a month in hospital. But while lying on that hospital bed, full of morphine, they told me I'd never walk without the aid of a walking stick, I'd never run, and my military career was over. I chose not to accept that. What I did then was I made a decision to cut out any pain physically and mentally, a decision that would haunt me for many years to come. I spent almost a year in rehabilitation, learning to walk, run, and eventually, against all odds, return to full active service in the army. For the whole year of rehabilitation, nobody sat down and asked me how I was doing or what the impact was. 
In fact, as soon as I was fit, they sent me to Northern Ireland on my first operational tour in the Troubles. I served in many locations around the world during my time in the Army, including Bosnia, the conflicts in Kosovo. While I was proving to be a very effective soldier, to those who knew me most, knew I was suffering emotionally. We never spoke about it. We never showed emotion. It was a sign of weakness. We most certainly could never ask for help. Although wrong, I found that alcohol blocked the pain in my head and it allowed me to escape reality. On leaving the forces, I became a bodyguard. and I've had some great experiences. I protected a prime minister and government officials in places like Baghdad. I've got to see a lot. I was excelling, what, excelling at what I was doing, but on the outside I looked like I had it together, but inside I was broken. The decision I made to shut out my pain when I got shot meant I struggled to feel anything emotionally. I was numb. The more I progressed, the more the pain hurt. I was going through life in a virtual coma. I would spend evenings in my garage on my own, drinking, looking at a brick wall wishing my life would end. I remember the first thought in the morning when I opened my eyes was one of dread that I hadn't died in my sleep. Desmond Tutu once described hope as the ability to see light in the darkness. I got to a place where I had no hope. Enough was enough and I finally decided to end my life. As I was in the process of doing it, I had one thought that stopped me. I didn't want my children to grow up without a father like I had. I couldn't do it. I actually felt a failure not being able to take my own life. There was no escape from the life I was in. I was stuck. In my mind, my life was over. I'd been dealt a bad hand, and that was my life. I thought I'd try and do something good for my kids, because I never wanted to experience anyone to experience my life, let alone my children. So I decided to take them to church. There are many reasons why people come out of despair. When I was trying to do something right by my family, I found faith. For me, the first time in many years, I could see a hope and a future. As the Wolverhampton motto says, out of darkness cometh light. I could see light out of the darkness. Over many years, I learned to face reality. And with my amazing wife, great family and friends, my life has changed. I'm grateful for every day I have and I enjoy life to the full. Those who know me would be testament to that. So why politics? This is a question I have battled with for many years. <laughs> I never voted prior to 2015, and my decisions of politicians and the decision, uh, my views of politicians and the decisions they made in this house were at best described negative. Mm. I've been on operations and stood alongside my colleagues, some who are no longer here because of decisions I tri attributed to this house. This was never my first option, but I was faced with a choice. I could moan about these decisions, I could ignore them, or I could try and make a difference. I chose the latter, and history will decide if I achieve this. I have experienced Global Britain. I have protected people in 50 countries around the world. I have the pr privilege of experiencing life, seeing some of the best and the worst of humanity, seeing what people can do for each other, but also, sadly, what they can do to each other. I bring to this chamber an unusual experience that I will use it to help shape how we move forward. I want to champion social justice, to see families don't go without food, People don't sleep rough, and they don't suffer in silence. And people are helped when they need it. I basically want our children to grow up in a country that they can be proud of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know how my life was transformed, and I want to inspire people to believe that they can see change in theirs. We have promised a lot, and we have a lot to deliver. Mm -hmm. Failure to deliver on our words will mean that all of this has been for nothing. And the people of Wolverhampton and this country will be no better off. If we become a government of action, we will change the very fabric of society for good. Yeah, yeah. I have served my country before with pride, and I will do so in this chamber. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Yeah.
Ruth Cadbury. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And it is an honour to follow the new member for Wolverhampton South West after his powerful maiden speech. His powerful life story. He illustrated so personally the cost and the damage of post-traumatic stress syndrome uh, and the struggles he had in overcoming that. And therefore, that makes his experience, bringing his experience here, so powerful. And I look forward to hearing more about his commitment to his constituents and to this country, as he so eloquently covered.